Jared Polin, Frono's Photo. Dot com and welcome to Raw Talk 241. I don't know what that sound was in the background. Todd must have this screwed. Guy, it was t- this guy. Todd One already screwed something up. Job. Yep. But yep. let me let me just preface this by there is a massive storm going on outside right now. They call it a bomb cyclone. If we could cut to outside, instead of cutting to outside, let's cut to Dan and see what Dan looks like right now. This is Dan. He's running the machine. That's um, Dan's dad mustache as well. <laughs> oh, he's, I haven't looked at Dan. He's grown a mustache. Oh, he's got a fresh I mean, you mustache. can't see it. It just looks like there's dirt on his face. <laughs> so, kind of like Steven. Yep. <laughs> Steven shaved like three months ago. And it's still growing in. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, yeah, there's a bomb cyclone going out. So, if we do lose power. Our bad. <laughs> then, then we lose Mother power. Nature. Yeah. Uh, but welcome to another live show of Raw Talk. Thank you for joining us every Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We've been very good at hitting those, and we're live. So we appreciate you guys ch- tuning in. This week, YouTube has finally rolled out something that we've been waiting for that used to be there. Actually, the comments it all used, used to, to stay. No, the comments used to stay. So you would have like thousands of comments on a video. And then when we, did, when we were doing live last week or every other week mm-hmm. prior, those comments on the side don't stay. Well, anything you write in the comments today supposedly is supposed to stay. So if you watch this back, there should be a comment feed. Well, that's what I wonder. Is it going to mimic Facebook where it's like in the video? That's the what, feed popping well, up in live time? it's not going to be time? in. It should be on the right-hand side. So it'll be on the right-hand side similar to I haven't seen live. one yet, so we'll see one when we're done watching it. Will it be in the normal comment section, though? No. We have I, no gotcha. answers for this, Stephen. Exactly. None whatsoever. You're, you're supposed to know all this, Todd. <laughs> so keep you're in mind, all of it. Uh, the, the table of contents will be posted... After the show, about 30 minutes after the show. So yep. the big Ken Rockwell discussion. Ken Rockwell is my new best friend. That discussion BFFs. will happen at... We can't tell you because it hasn't happened yet. Yep. So that's going to happen shortly. But we're saving that. We're going to bury that lead a little bit because Ken Rockwell's my new... It's not even clickbait, Stephen. It's like a fact. I mean, you guys are literally BFFs now. Totally. I, got his, I didn't actually get his phone number because I didn't want it. But I, I have his Whoa. email. Oh. I didn't want to have his phone. I didn't want to be responsible for having Ken Rockwell's phone number. You didn't want what? to what you, 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 you didn't want to drunk call him in the middle of the night. <laughs> Ken, I really miss you. <laughs> Ken, <laughs> I miss well, you. Ken, what are you wearing? Do you still have your cargo pants on? Well, you you don't. You could have if Stephen and and Ken Rockwell stood next to each other out on the sand dunes. You would have not known. We, the we did have the it's same just attire. before and after. Yeah, that's all. Before and way before. Hey, he's got style. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> So we we went on a massive Sony trip. Yeah. Which we didn't Huge. say we didn't say we were going we said we, we were going to WPPI. Obviously we couldn't say it. That's one of those Hope Hicks Hicks uh, white lies. Yep. We were going to WPPI through Sony. Did, Todd, did you like that bar, that jab right there? What? One jab. Oh, I'm again. supposed to pay attention to you? My yeah, bad. I, I was, said I, I was looking at the chat. I said we pulled one of those Hope, Hip, Hope Hicks white lies and told people we were going to WPPI. <laughs> oh, I see what you did there. Uh, if you'd like to leave comments. So funny. That was a huge so, joke. So we do, uh, if you're going to put a question into the question for Flying Solo for later, just put capital question at the beginning so it can pop up in Todd's face. If you do do a super chat, thank you for doing that. You yes. don't have to do that. Um, we take both questions yep. that come in. Uh, so, yeah, Sony called us a couple weeks ago. And was like, don't tell anybody. We're going to be doing an announcement. Yep. We don't know what the announcement's going to be. So we had no idea what they the They wouldn't give was. us any information. We didn't even know if it was going to be a camera until like a week prior, I think. Yeah, thankfully it wasn't like that one that they invited us to up in New York that ended up being the RX-10, RX I think. Which yeah. is fine, but... It's not an it's A7 not a frame. It's not an A7 III, yeah. which we ended up seeing when we were there. Yep. So I've been... Every day I was in uh, Vegas, I did the Daily Fro... On my own, Stephen didn't know I was doing it because I never told him. He told me. Yeah, 33 times a day. I was going to say, I was like, you told me a million times. I remind myself. I was going to set up your audio for it. <laughs> with, well, with, with my girlfriend, it's like, uh, I've got to do my podcast tonight. She's like, no shit. You say it every five minutes. I'm like, because I don't want to forget. Jared likes telling he, you the same thing He likes to announce everything. Times. Guys, I got to pee. Just to Thank remind you. himself. Thanks. Yeah, it's like, okay, Thanks. you go Thanks. do that, Jared. I don't know why. I don't know why either. I don't know why either. Every moment's I just important. Nod my head. Jared. But if you haven't gone here, in the comments, if you've listened to the Daily Fro, please let me know that you've listened to the Daily Fro. I've given the phone number a bunch of times. If you want to call and leave feedback about Raw Talk or anything, it's 267 454. Oh, Dan probably has it. Yeah, 6376. Look at that. Dan's on the ball. 
Dan's on the bomb diggity ball. So should we start getting into the the, the big discussion? I think so. Big discussion. Yeah, we we did a lot of stuff this week. It's been a real busy week. So it started off with we went to WPPI, but I don't think we're talking about that, right? Uh, we should talk about WPPI real quick. Let's just recap that. So WPPI, for those who don't know, is a wedding professional photographer's institution. I don't know what the I stands for, so I just put institution in there. I was there. like, wait, is that institution? I really don't know if that's the truth. Um, it's a different show than a lot of the others Very because different. there's a lot of working professionals. or More relaxed, it seemed, actually. Yeah, well, it wasn't New York. Yeah, yeah. But it, it felt more relaxed as in like more working professionals going than hobbyists. Right. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So can we roll some of that footage, Todd? We actually don't have WP, WPPI footage. Of not footage. WPPI, of the next no. thing. Of the next no. thing? No. What? Don't do my job. Don't try to do my job. You just talk. I'm... Um, well, we were but WPPI, real quick, we only had a couple of hours there, maybe three or four hours. Met a lot of Fro fans. We also uh, checked out a, a bunch of, of new things. What? You meet a lot of Todd fans as well? Uh, I don't think we ran into any Zero Todd fans. Todd fans. Actually, Bob. they were like, who's that old guy? Get him off the show. I hate you. <laughs> <laughs> but we, uh, we actually saw a lot of new things. We saw the XH1 in person. We saw the Sigma 14 to 24. Oh, yeah. How <laughs> the actual... In some cases, tightness is good. The zoom in this focus case, ring, tightness super, isn't good. It was super, super tight. tight. Way too tight. Super tight. <laughs> way too tight. It was way too... You, could, <laughs> you know what? Could have used your little bottle of lube. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, that's a good reference. Yep, yep. Uh, but we saw that. We saw the new K1 Mark II from right, Pentax. Which all they did was throw a K2 on it. Well, I will say they, ch- they, they did the new dynamic uh, pixel shift in person, handheld, and it worked for the most part. I mean, from the back of the screen, it looked like it worked fine. Uh, and we saw a bunch of other cool things like the new Steadicam we're going to talk about later yeah. and uh, some other Canon stuff. So like that the was M50. the WPPI part. Mm-hmm. The, the, the Sony part is the day. No, Monday is when the second day. So as we came in on Sunday. Correct. They put us up in a hotel. We stayed at the W, which is connected to the SLS. It was nice. Um, then we, we went over to the Sony event mm-hmm. and we ended up leaving early. We basically got there. They announced the camera, live streamed it. We got the camera. We were like first in line, luckily. Yeah. Boom. And ran, ran back to the hotel and filmed it right away, a preview video. We wanted to get the preview up right away. We, we knew we were coming back the next day, which is what you're seeing. Uh, you're going to see over here in a second. We knew we were going back, and they had setup shoots for us. So what happens is they take you, they set up these shoots, they give you the cameras. The lenses they gave us, the two lenses that they packed, for us were the 24 to 105 and the 85 18 and neither of those two are my go-to selection yeah. so i kind of there's your go-to selection right there <laughs> this guy was not as hot as the last guy all right todd mm-hmm. from sedona mm-hmm. um i made sure i'm like look i need a 20 i need a i need a 12 to 24 and a 70 to 200 i can live with the 24 to 105 but like i need good glass and you're going to see in a minute i use for a lot of the portraits the 70 to 200 and so I, I needed that. I don't know. I know part of the reason they limited us on the glass was the Olympics had a lot of the glass. There's another sh- the, the show was going on. And then there was a, fo- a CP plus, which is. Yeah. And I think that's why they I mean, there was 40 or 50 of us there. So that's a lot of glass to bring when they're already WPPI is going on. Yeah. And all the other stuff. But the coolest thing they set up was the rain, the waterfall. Yeah. This thing right here. The they had that set up. And so there was a clump of photographers around there. So I didn't go there first. Everybody went there first, and I just went way. I went right for the hot guy. Now it was cool to shoot, but you had a Shocking. twenty-four to one hundred five, and <laughs> you really needed at least a seventy-two hundred to hit this far away. And this guy had his clothes on to start, and we, a couple of us, and were this like, was, Jared, um, this was your request. request. That was your off. request. Excuse me, are you going to be taking your shirt off? Because <laughs> I did. We actually did ask for that. I'm like, he's ripped. Yeah. The weird part is Jared took his shirt off as well. Here's all the photographers, though. Just crowded around trying to shoot the same thing. And again, if you had a 24 well, to 105, it was tough. I, what I want to point out about the photographers is, you, as you see, there, you see where they were shooting from? For whatever reason, the majority of the photographers didn't find it um, important to be right in the middle. Yeah. I show up like 35 minutes after they've already been shooting. And there's nobody and I went in the middle. Right in the middle. Yeah. I want to be lined up right in the middle. That's the best shot. I agree. Yeah. And so got some great photos of this guy. Got some really cool photos that they set this up. Um, the autofocus, I was surprised when the guy was blowing the water and his hair was going, it, stayed it nailed on the on. face and didn't get thrown off by the, by the water going. Yep. Um, I, now, I can't give you a final... Now, keep in mind, I think they were more in front of the water Shh. or right under it. Oh, hey, what's hey, up? Girl. Hey. hey, girl. 
so cool. That's a great shot. That was like a hero shot. I tried. And I Steve, tried to do a bunch now of slow Steve, motion. You, you shot all this with the camera as well. Correct. So all this footage that you're seeing, now keep in mind, it's super compressed with the live stream and might look a little blocky on there, but the original footage looks great. Uh, this look is all good. with the A7 III. Really had zero issues. A lot of this is slow motion, 120 frames per second, 1080. Really no issue shooting with the camera. It's something I could definitely easily use, and even with Jared, which is hard to shoot you because it's run and gun, very fast-paced, yeah. quick-moving environment. And, how, and, and how's the autofocus on it? Autofocus was great. I really had no issues uh, with the continuous AFC mode. And what I'll say is that the autofocus in this camera may be better than the A7R3 because it's using the A9's A9 system. autofocus system. There's what is, more phase detection. What is super point. interesting about what Sony has done is they've come out with three cameras and they didn't cripple any of them. Yep. Whereas Nikon and Canon cripple their lower end cameras yep. because they want to leave things out. So here, Sony has the same, like, better 4K than you get in the A7R 3 at least we think. No, it's, it's pretty much fact. Yeah, the A7 III is amazing. better than the A7R 3 in full frame mode. Right. And so you've got that. Um, the body is the same as the A7R Three, just don't drop it. Here's the actual A7R 3 with the grip. And, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's the, same the exact, exact body. same body, which is great. You have the IAF. You have, look, we're not kissing Sony's ass just because they flew us out there. That certainly doesn't hurt that they bought us dinner, drinks, women. Oh, wait, they didn't. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> no, they paid for the guy, though. <laughs> <laughs> paid for that. <laughs> um, we will tell you it like it is no matter what. Um, we will find something to talk bad about because there's yeah. always going to be something. We, we still have a lot to do with the camera, for sure. Well, one, yeah. I have to be able to open RAW files yep. because as of now, you I really can't, can't open tell. RAW files. So I shot RAW plus JPEG fine. I shot the 14-bit the RAW uh, and JPEG fine. M what fascinates me the most about this camera is not this one particularly, but the A7R. Uh, Just pretend A7 this is III. an A7 III. <laughs> what, what, what is interesting is the $2,000 price tag. Yeah. I always find it interesting that they didn't pull That's this. the body? They didn't pull the 1990, they didn't, it's not 1999, 96. They're like, no, it's two grand. They didn't try to play any games with yep. it. But two grand for what you get in this body, for me, I think, one, I'll just say this, is that if I had to choose between an A7 III and an A7 R3, I may go with the one that's going to give me the better high ISO capability. A7 and in this III. case, I think the A7 III is with the new 24 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. They're both BSI sensors, but... The, the 24 megapixel. It's 51,200 native compared to the 25,600 of the A7R 3 And so Sony is... Or whatever it is. You, you can't deny the fact that Sony has been on point for the last five years. On well, for not sure, the man. last five. Close to the last two, and a half, two years or less yeah. where now they, these things are real. I, I think they've come to perfect the A7 series. I mean, three generations down the line, they finally gave it the joystick, the bigger battery, the overheating issue has been solved. Do you know what oh. I hate about it? What? The freaking viewfinder in the desert. The, uh, the, the, the EVF isn't bright enough. And I know well, I couldn't put on yeah. bright mode. But, but I will say, this one, I think the A7R 3 has the sunny weather for the EVF. They're, where this, the A7R 3, only goes plus two in brightness. Well, it also has it's a million less dots in the less viewfinder. Which correct. I honestly didn't notice. It, like, it didn't jump out to me as, like, yeah. this has less. I just shot. I love an EVF so much. Because the way that I'm shooting, I've got a... Um, Atomos up top. Yep. And when the Atomos is up top and it's plugged into the side, I can't review my images. But I don't feel a need to chimp with the camera because I'm seeing the picture yeah. in the viewfinder. I'm seeing everything. And so I'm finding myself not having the chimp because I'm looking at the final result before I even take it. Here, throw that away, please. And you've got a picture of this guy uh, on the screen, right? Who? The model that you were shooting here. What about him? You've got a picture of him. Yeah. Is Todd supposed to show that now? Well, I figured, why not? Well, if you want me to. Okay, Todd, show the picture of uh, the guy. Your boyfriend. Hey. Ooh, hey, what's up? Well, I did this, and the girl was in the background. Well, I, I like, like the girl that. in the background. I like that. Yeah. That's why I went on that angle. And yeah. what I did a lot of was I was telling him what I was doing. Uh, I, I think Stephen was recording for most of that. You directed him, yeah, for because sure. Because I wanted, I wanted, you know, it's, instead of just showing up and like, why am I moving to the left? So here's why I'm moving to the left. Because what I'm doing is getting you in focus and her putting her makeup on yep. out of focus. And then I show him, and it, it just... It, it's a great way to get a rapport with a model. Keep in mind, though, th these models are serious pros as well. You don't, you don't even have to tell them anything when you're at these Sony events. They just no, look great. Sometimes the models overdo it. They do sometimes overdo it. Moving. But they'll do whatever you want. In reason. Wait, Steven. In reason. Whoa, what? Whoa, in reason. Whoa. Did you learn something that I didn't <laughs> learn? First off, when why I wasn't mouth, I I'm like, oh, In reason. Okay, what, what, what are we going to next? The next uh, video clip? The next event, yeah. What was that? The next event... 
oh, which Todd here's will a couple show. Of oh, yeah, let's pictures. show a couple of photos from the, yeah, the waterfall. Yeah, talk about your photos. Here's some of them from So that. the one thing I can't tell you right now is the quality of the raw file, because this is from a JPEG, and I tweaked it. I can basically tell you I would love to tweak the raw file. But you because can. Well, you can in Capture One, well, but right. not in Lightroom, which is your But preferred. when Lightroom hits soon for us, for the beta, it will be good. But I just, I was surprised. I was able to nail the face, even with... Well, the face detect works so great. Even with the water coming out. Even up with the water coming out. Because I've oh, noticed yeah, that's sometimes with the D5 or some of the other cameras, they may get thrown off. And I know there's different settings to change, but it hit the face. It didn't get thrown off by the other thing. The face detect, man, the box shows up. Even when I was that far away filling the frame, because this isn't cropped, the face, the, the face detect shows up. Well, the face detect the always face. shows up. And then when you hit IAF on top of that, it hits the eye, right? Well, it, it won't hit the eye from as far away it, as from we this were, far, but it found the face perfect yeah. and stayed on it. It's great. Man, I love system, that feature. The focus system is incredible. And this then, is a really cool shot. This guy. Yeah, yeah that, that ended up being pretty cool. And that was a happy accident. I think at one point he flicked his hair up and everyone's like, oh, do, do that, that again, again like 30 <laughs> times. And then blow water out at the same yeah, time. Yeah, and then blow water. Yeah. This guy was ripped. He wasn't yeah, that's that good. Stuff. Way I mean, I mean look, before we, even, before we even started today, I was grilling Steven about autofocus and how good the camera was. Because looking at just the footage before the show, I was like, you shot this and this is all the camera. The stabilization looks great. The images look great. You said the autofocus was great? Yeah. And keep in mind, a lot of the footage that you're seeing, again, versus the compression is going to hit it hard on the live stream. But yeah. I did really nothing to it. This is all of it pretty much straight out it of the camera. Really, so it's going to look really a little nice. muted and a little not as sharp as and it should be. And that's handheld right there. That's this is handheld. Shot. Yep. A lot of this 120 frames per second is handheld. You just got to not breathe and do a steady move, like a dolly forward or some How, kind of is it Is it water resistant? Um, <laughs> It, well, in all seriousness, it's not as good as the weather sealing, the most likely, of gotcha. any other yeah. Nikon, well, the higher-end Nikons and Canons. And with the mirrorless cameras, too, yeah. the A7 series. Oh, speaking of, um, is it water-resistant? Let's talk about, is it ear, um, what are they called? Uh, In-ear monitor-resistant, headphone-resistant. You know, if you so happen to accidentally drop a headphone inside oh, the uh, sensor. I forgot. I didn't even tell you about this part, Todd. Steven, what take, happened? Steven, take it away. So <laughs> we were filming the Photo News Fix. First, we just got the camera. Actually, no, this is the preview. We just got the just camera. Just got the camera that night, maybe Perfect. like an yeah. hour prior. Sorry, we each so got far, a camera. So far, so good. We each so got far, a camera. So I'm setting up mine, getting all the menu settings set. I pop it on. We film the preview. Everything's cool. Done. I'm taking my earbuds out as I'm all, like... Actually, no, I'm not taking my earbuds out. I'm switching taking lenses. the lens off, switching it out for another lens, and accidentally my earbud dropped out of my ear into the sensor. Oops. <laughs> Literally for a split I'm like, oh, smudged it didn't it. even uh, hit it. So the oil from like an ear hit the sensor and smudged it slightly. So I switched cameras to Jared's camera instead. We filmed with that. I took it to the PR rep from Sony and was like, I, I didn't mean to do this. It just you, slipped by accident. He meant to do it. <laughs> Canon I, paid him to do so it. So they cleaned the body for me. They came back and they're like, yeah, we got to replace the entire sensor. There's a scratch on it. I'm like, are you kidding me? It's that sensitive where, and I get it. But, but all the footage that you've seen was shot with the camera so with the scratch sensor. Exactly. Everything you saw was with the scratch sensor. They cleaned it off, but they said it shouldn't really show up in video, but they said they will have to replace the sensor as soon as uh, we're yep. done with it. Steven screwed it up. I broke a sensor the first like 10 minutes I had it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> My bad, Sony. All right, let's go. <laughs> yeah, it's going to happen. Yeah. Next, uh, next clip, roll that, roll that footage. Roll that beautiful footage. What, right. what, what's next? Doom got buggies. Doom buggies. Yeah, I, I went in the desert like that. Wore my boots. Awesome. So they, they set up a doom buggy thing. So we all got to drive out with doom buggies. Then they set up a whole shoot. They had a model out there, which I really wasn't aware that there was a model until I walked by her and she looked lonely. So I decided to stop and take some pictures. But you can see the doom buggies bounce uh, going over the, the, the lip of the hill that they were doing. So yeah, they had a little jump setup. It was pretty cool. What's that? I don't know. Todd must be messing with it. What's Todd? What buttons are Todd? Pu is Todd pushing? About? What was that? What are you talking about? Oh, oh, that little thing at the bottom. I don't know. I don't know. Why don't we just let it play? Tell what's I, going I, on. I don't. I don't think I touched anything. Yeah, sure, sure. But right. Whatever. Anyway, this, this is, is all clip. slow motion footage. Go back footage. to the other clip, Todd. Or is this the? Is this part of the just clip? Just let it play out. Oh, all right. I didn't know if that was the clip. Um, so doom buggies. We were taking pictures of them, racing around, yep. had a bunch of the photographers up on the hill. I actually stayed away from where everybody was initially because everybody rushed to the top of the hill to do the same thing. The majority, like 80% of the people went up there, so mm -hmm. I decided not to. Um, I wanted to stay further away so that I could 
I don't know. I thought it was cool to get all the photographers taking pictures, well, taking a picture of them. And let's speak about the location real quick. It was literally in the middle of the desert. We went, I don't know, about a mile, mile and a half away from, from the road. Yeah. Right next to Nellis Air Force Base, which was really cool because like F-16s, F-22s, all the airplanes are flying right over us, all the jets. Um, but yeah, the location was really cool, just obviously very sandy. So it's not the best option to uh you not know, the best place to be changing, changing lenses. lenses yeah and they were giving out 100 to 400s for people to use and, and rocket airs i still didn't want to use the 100 to 400 you I shot a lot of wide stuff too 12 to 24 70 to 200 yep and i did switch lenses out there i don't even care turn off the camera switch lenses so did you have any issues shooting out there with the camera i In know you said the evf was a little just the dim, EVF was a little tough to see outside um no major issues that i could think of this is you going up the hill, actually, to all the photographers up there. Yeah, but we've seen this one a bunch. Is this the next clip? This is the next clip where you're about to ride in the dune buggy. Yeah, I got to ride in the dune buggy. Um, so cool. Super my my car kept stalling. Wait, wait. Here's my favorite part. Best part. No. Oh! <laughs> I didn't know how to get them on because of the lip thing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm going to get all this badass footage. I come back to review it, and I'm like, oh, great. So you can see the <laughs> GoPro mount on the screen, on the side right there. Yeah. We did end up putting a GoPro. Did you cut the footage in about me miming my, uh, my phone? Oh, number? I forgot to do that. So, <laughs> so what happened is we didn't know if the GoPro would stay attached to the mount because there was no... Basically, we didn't have the correct mount for the GoPro. We just kind of half-assed it and shoved it in there, and I hoped and prayed it wouldn't fall off. So while I was stopped because uh, the front tire of the main guys fell, fell off, off, literally. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> the uh, I'm sitting there and I'm giving my I'm miming my phone number just in case because I figure I might as well put my phone number in the damn if the thing. The GoPro falls and somebody, off. F- if somebody finds it, we should probably put a sticker inside. We should that says in case it's found, call this number. Yeah, we should put a label or something on there. So I didn't really get to drive that much. I also got stuck because I was following somebody and they kept here, going yeah. slow and they were going the wrong. <laughs> look, look at how bad you get. So I got stuck. <laughs> oh, is that where I'm stuck? <laughs> this is where you're stuck, and you're just trying to get out of this. <laughs> Nothing. Turning the wheel. Turning the wheel is probably the worst thing to do, too. <laughs> I'm like, wait, what eh, am I doing? Eh, and I think eh. you get started here again, and well, then you get stuck like two seconds later. No, I didn't get stuck. I stopped. Because as soon as I got out, I didn't know where to go. I couldn't see the flags from anybody. And they warned us about falling off of the mountain. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, I'm not going to go over a corner I can't see. <laughs> yep. And so I just sat there. I'm like, yep, I'm just going to sit there. In the release that we had to sign, it literally said, like, you could fall off a cliff that's 80 feet high. Which <laughs> we didn't really. Well, I guess they could I didn't really been. see any cliffs personally. But, but that, that left me not wanting to screw up. And then this is the big story, actually, Todd. If you wanna, do you want to save this or do you want to talk about it now? Well, we'll just show that's Ken Rockwell. We'll, we'll get to this in a minute. Um, we, you can run the footage. He was there shooting pictures, dressed like Steven. Uh, well, and you're like, I want to shoot pictures of Ken Rockwell. Yeah, I'm like, I'm going to shoot pictures of Ken. So there I asked Ken if I could get pictures of him. He's like, yeah, yeah as, soon as, as long as you send them to me, Jared. And he basically <laughs> was saying that nobody ever takes pictures of him. Because he's, he's never on these events. No, I, there's a, we'll tell that story in a minute, too, yeah, yeah. about how the whole thing came to be. But I thought it would be cool to have this, oh, and the audio of whatever he's saying to me. Oh, I got it all. Yeah, I, that's why. I, I, did you see me inch closer? I saw you. I saw you. <laughs> I'm like stepping closer because <laughs> I know the mic is on me and yep. he doesn't have a mic. Yep. No, nah, it'll pick him up, though. So uh, anyway, that was, that was uh, Ken and I. And we're going to talk. Uh, is there other stuff to talk about? Uh, I think that might be it. Todd, is, oh, there is the helicopter ride. I forgot about oh, that, Oh, yeah, too. let's get to the helicopter. The helicopter ride. We went back to Maverick Helicopters. Yeah. They are very safe and secure. They, Until they, you fall out? They are very good. What? No, it was great. Until you fall. Yeah, I almost. I, I was hanging out pretty good. You way, were hanging out. Way tighter this time, it felt like. Yeah. Well, when I sat on the left front, I was literally, my knee was out the, the helicopter most of the time. The right front? Yeah, the right front. Yeah. Was your um, badonkadonk safe, though? Yeah, my badonkadonk <laughs> was safe. That's the only thing that kept them inside. Here's all the photographers, <laughs> though, that were in the helicopter. There was a whole bunch of them. Yeah, so they flew us out to, what's that called? Red? Valley of Fire. Oh, Valley of Fire. Awesome place. They land on the top of these rocks. A place that get you out. can't That's access amazing. by foot. Yeah, you get out after, like... Th- you this can- is shot again with the A7 III, slow motion. Oh, the greatest was when we were taken off. And the guy's like, this is going to be cool. Watch this. And we like come over the edge of the cliff and just dive. And you'll bomb. see that coming up. Like as a well. roller coaster. But this is us landing, and we're literally landing on, on the rock. That's insane. It, Keep by the way, all your hands inside the vehicle. I jumped out when he's like, don't jump out yet. And by accident, I jumped out because <laughs> I was kind of leaning out. And like I, I had to jump out to, to catch myself. And uh, yeah, he, he looked pretty pissed. <laughs> yeah. But it worked out. Yeah, it was all good. Yeah. So 
there wasn't much to shoot while we were up there. Well, the issue was that we only had about we landed for about maybe twenty minutes for our flight. Yeah. So we didn't have much time to shoot. By the time we found something interesting to shoot, it was kind of time to pack up. Well, yep. at least so I you ran found around the, the weeds. So that's yeah, good. I ran around and got some pretty stuff. Jared, I think Speaking shot of pretty stuff. And there's weeds. Some there's cactus. more weeds. <laughs> more weeds. <laughs> yeah, good one, Todd. But yeah, I didn't really shoot much. I shot the cactus. You found you found more like macro stuff to shoot. It looked like yeah, with my there you 24 go. To 105. <laughs> There's you shooting. There's your friend. Hi, cactus. Stubby. Beautiful landscape. Let's shoot a cactus. <laughs> Dude, I wasn't gonna get any photos of I the know. landscape because it didn't look very good. That's me. But then we went to take Super off again, Jared. and then we were going to the Hoover Dam. Yeah, we over. Oh. This is us flying over. Oh! That was awesome. He's like, watch this. He's like, guys, this is going to be great. And then he <laughs> goes, it's like, doo, 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 boom. Yeah. Like fighter jet stuff. And I didn't even know it was going to happen because I'm looking through the EVF and I'm like, oh, crap. Dude, this my footage whole stomach looks just, great. Yeah, it looks really I, good. I, I, I would like to play with this camera when it comes in. Why? It's still, you're not going to get your focus right. <laughs> That's why I always ask, how's the autofocus? <laughs> so well, we shot the Hoover Dam. Yeah, that was kind of tough, too, because we were basically circling around it. But we only did about, what, two circles? Um, and yeah, I feel like we were a little door. too high to shoot. I was shoot. far, and I had the 12 to 24 on, so I really just shot my leg. My and then leg. this is everyone that was that in, the, uh, in the helicopter with us. We had uh, Gary Fong, Gordon, uh, Brian, Brian Smith, Smith, and yeah. then the other guy, yeah. vegetarian guy. Yeah, yeah. No, it was a great trip. Todd, I mean, do you want to show some of the extra photos that I have? From the yeah. Grand uh, from the um, Whatever I haven't shown you. From the dune buggies. Yeah, from the dune buggies. Look at that. You see that shot, Stephen? Wow, that's a lot of photographers. The problem is I zoomed in on A lot of ego the up there. A lot <laughs> of ego. I zoomed in on the top left yeah. around those people, and I used the 70 to 200 on this one, and I'm looking at the JPEG, and it looks so distorted, so distorted. From the 12 to 24? No, with the 70 to 200. Really? I don't understand at why. At 200? At, yeah, and I was at 28. The top left corner where those people are, they look... Not sharp. What about the, the line the further, from the dune? The further to the edge, it looks like there's some kind of movement. It looks really it looks ghosty. And you had steady shot on, I assume. Is that a siren outside? That's not yeah. you, Todd, right? No, that's that a fire truck me. outside. No. <laughs> that's an actual <laughs> fire truck outside. Um, that's interesting. It looks fine here, though. Would you say like the top edges? No, I'm saying right where those people are on the left, it had issues. Wow. And so I need to see the raw file to determine hmm. whether or not it's that or something else. Huh. But they're getting closer, the sirens. Hopefully, Hopefully we can get door. home. Hopefully the factory isn't on fire. Well, we have smoke detectors. <laughs> we do. <laughs> yeah, we'll be Doom right. buggy bouncing off the, over, the, over the sand dune. <laughs> all right, next. That was fun to shoot, the dune buggies. There's, there's your there's Ken, Ken Rockwell. And Wearing the him, same exact attire as me. I had him take off his hat so he could look, look, fly. look cool. It looks dope. And he's got the big lens in his pocket, and there you go. We should talk about this now. BFFLs. Kent, so here's the story. We're at lunch. Eric Rossi and... And um, Tim Forbes. No. Ted Forbes. I'm Ted kidding. Forbes. Excuse me. We're, we, we were eating. Stephen and I were having burgers at Umami Burger. And then we see Eric and Ted come in, invite them over. Yeah, we're like, we ended up sitting us. there for two and a half, three hours bullshitting. And yeah, we were there for a while. We, were, we ended up talking about Ken Rockwell, how nobody ever sees him at any event. He's the, he's the you know, fairy tale, the mythical unicorn that no one ever sees. Right. So then we go the back after world. lunch. I go downstairs because I want to get some fruit. I wanted an apple. And I walk down, and in the lobby, there's this guy smiling at me. Oh, he's like, and I'm upstairs, back in the hotel room. And I walk up, and it's Ken Rockwell. I'm like, Ken, we need to get a picture. Jared sends me a picture. So the first picture here, I take with my arm around him, I shoot it with just a regular camera on yeah. the on the iPhone, and I'm like, oops, that's JPEG. I'm like, Ken, I need to shoot that again this time in RAW. So I shot it with the RAW, and then we all sat downstairs just talking with Ken for a long time about his website, about how it started, uh, about his family, you know, his growing family. But, and but the irony, though, is that we literally were just talking about how he's never at any of these events. We don't, no one's ever seen him really in person. And then literally like 10 minutes later, you take a picture of, with him in the lobby and send it to me. <laughs> I thought he was m messing around and you like photoshopped an image. <laughs> yeah, I photoshopped Because it looked an image. fake. <laughs> and uh, yeah, then you met him and it's all downhill from there yeah much. well so we spent a couple days with ken there yeah. and the guy is probably one of the nicest guys i've ever met the nicest guy ever he yeah. does talk a lot he's got a lot of information to share yeah he told me one day that his son was googling him <clears throat> ken 
And who is this guy that's calling him an idiot in the videos? I don't recall ever calling him an idiot. I'm sure you did. I don't think I call him an idiot. But he's like, son, there's people on the Internet. They say all types of things. It's not a big deal. And he was all happy. I mean, I, I will just say if that was me and I was Ken Rockwell, I would have been like, oh, hey, Jared Shank. <laughs> just shank <laughs> you on the side. <laughs> Stab you in the back or something. How's this for raw, mother? <laughs> JPEG basic, mother. Are you actually pouting, Jared? Did I just see a pouty face? I did. I know that. I know did. that the biggest bully is the first one to pout. Oh, really? So anyway, Ken and I were we, we had lots of conversations. A lot of people were talking with Ken. Um, Super but, nice. but he is really he is really nice. Now that doesn't mean that I agree with the stances of the JPEG at all. But as a person, it, it we'll try to give him a call on one of these. Skype him in. Total and, dad and do too. A call. Loves his that would kids. Be great. Yeah, always that would talking be great. about his kids. But we, we, were, we were having this other discussion, which was kind of interesting. He was talking about how he wishes the cameras could give him better highlights and shadow. Oh, yeah. Like if he exposed for the shadows, but then the highlights are blown. But if he exposes for the, the highlights, he can't get the shadows. And I'm just like, I'm like, Ken, I'm like, you know, you're asking for something that already exists. You're literally Point saying... Point to your T-shirt. Just shoot roll. <laughs> I just had to say it. I'm like, Ken, Ken you're, you're yeah. saying it. Oh, we hit 1,000? Oh, yes, no. sir. I had to think back I was to wondering. It. I thought you were I'm just like, honking the horn for no reason. Well, it, it's also for Ken. <laughs> for Ken, yeah. It, no, it's actually for Ken, but we also have 1,000. Oh, that's great. Some people awesome. Watch. Oh, well, thank you for everybody for logging in. Yeah, we really you appreciate you tuning in live. Uh, but yeah, so with Ken... Um, we were having that discussion, and everybody at the, everybody started kind of laughing because they're like, "You're you're talking about raw." <laughs> like, I just I just wish that I could expose for the highlights and somehow get the detail in the shadows. Now I don't know if he was specifically talking about like a sensor that will one day do well, it that, all and have probably. I think he was kind of saying that, but but you can have it right now, but Ken. You can still, like, oh, you, the irony! You can have it right now, Ken, my buddy. <laughs> he sat next to me at lunch. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we had great conversations with him. Yeah, so that that was really we're we're serious. I about really that. I really hope to see him at other events. It's it's been a long time since anyone's seen Ken anywhere. And in all honesty, with as much SEO out the took his, his yeah. page has, it is really smart of Sony to have invited him out. Yep. Where Nikon and Canon say they I I don't know if they have or haven't. He just hasn't been at any of those events. Yeah. If you want somebody who's going to love your camera, it's probably going to be Ken. <laughs> Because I don't think he can dislike anything in this world. I mean, every camera is the best camera ever. <laughs> Todd just raised his hand. Well, I've just uh, people are asking since you saw Ken, who else was there? Oh, they were just curious, like who else you saw? Did you uh, see any other? We saw people? Tony and Chelsea Northrup, Camera Store TV guys, Chris Nichols and Jordan Drake. Uh, we Gary saw Gary Fong, Learning Cameras, uh, that whole team. Uh, Gary Fong, um, DP Review guys, Rishi and Dale. Um, who else was there that I can think of? Gordon. Uh, Gordon Lang. Gordon Lang. Mm. The Toby guy? Toby from Photorec TV, I is think Is that it's what called. it is? Yep, and Taz. Look, there was uh, a lot of people there. A lot of... I mean, there was probably 30 to 40 people, and they brought out the Sony Collective, which is comprised of like 150 Instagrammers or something. 100. So the Sony event, the launch event, there was maybe 200 people in general. Lots in that of Instagrammers room. there. That's why we really? lots, of, lots of crystal holding ups. Oh, yeah. Lots of crystal holdings up, trying to a get lot of reflections. Prisms. Yeah. Prisms. Yeah. Oh, it's just so... Oh, a lot of yeah. fancy hairdos, checkered shirts, all kinds of stuff. Basically, I'm calm talking about Kinda myself. Kind of like Steven's crowd. That's Steven's, That's Steven's crowd right there. <laughs> <laughs> Hipster. So... Yeah, the the whole thing with the Ken, with Ken is it would be kind of cool to see him at other press events. Yeah. It would be smart of other companies to invite him because he does have a reach. I don't agree with the stuff for the most part. We'll see what he says about this. Um, I haven't I haven't railed on Ken Rockwell in years at yeah. this point. Um, since if you go the funny yeah the 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 Google thing when he said that his son Googled him and. Or when Ken was telling me, that was the story he was telling me on top of the hill, right? That when he Googles yeah. himself. When I Google myself, it's funny. There's KenRockwell.com, an and then there's Ken Rockwell's Dangerous to Photography. That's funny. <laughs> I know. He like laughs about <laughs> He's it. He's laughing He's about like, yeah, it. I'm funny. like, <laughs> okay, Ken. <laughs> uh, again, I'd, I'd be shanking you if it was me. <laughs> All right. So Seriously. the trip, that, that's the trip. We should probably now, move on. You guys did do the fix while you were out there. Oh, I don't yeah. think you guys talked about that. Do you have that footage? I do. So we were out there. Steven brought this thing that you're seeing on the screen called the Parrot. 
It was a Kickstarter that he paid 50 bucks for, and thankfully he brought it because there would be no other way that I could do the fix properly. <laughs> well, and here it is He's right here. Um, I mean, I literally didn't think to bring this until the night before, and I was like, well, let's try and do the fix because Jared was going to try and do it on an iPad off screen, and his eyes would have not been lined up at all. His eye line would have been totally off. Well, that's normal. <laughs> um, so I brought this out, and I'm like, let me just try it. It's super small, though, for your eyes. Jared needs, You're again, right. we have like a 30-inch teleprompter downstairs, or 27 inches, and you can barely read that <laughs> from eight <laughs> feet away. So I didn't think this would work, but I put it about four, four and a half feet away from you, and it worked out, thankfully. Yeah, I was able to see it. This footage that you're seeing it's, was shot with a tremendous camera called the iPhone. It's literally just with an amazing. iPhone. Um, not the footage. Oh, yeah, the footage was shot with it. But the teleprompter works with just an iPhone and the Parrot app. Oh, my God, it was perfect. And it was 77 millimeter lens. We put it on the front of it. We filmed wow. it with the actual A7 III. And boom. Um, how much was that, Stephen? So I bought this on Kickstarter when it first came out, the Parrot teleprompter, maybe a year and a half, two years ago. And I think it was 50 or 75 bucks for early birds. But I think it now... <laughs> I see what you did there. I think it now sells <laughs> for $100 for the Parrot 2. They have a second version, which is for wider iPhones now. Now, what it, what's nice is that you can order... That. That That's you a really order, nice solution, though. You can order thing. whatever filter thread you want. Um, so I ordered a 77 because a lot of my oh, lenses it goes are right 77 on the millimeters. Lens. Yeah. And it goes right on the lens. What? Dan, if you want to cut to me real quick. Um, you can screw it on by just using the filter thread, and then it literally just slides in just like that, and boom, it sticks to your lens. It's, it's a great portable solution. It's not the I'm best, that but it horn, works. I like it. It was unbelievable. I like so, that a lot. A lot of everyone was asking in the comments of the fix, like what teleprompter was it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you guys are looking for a very <laughs> affordable version of a that's like a perfect thing for like one man band. Yep. Corporate that's clients, store owners that can't read or can't really act. <laughs> yeah. Or can't anything. read. <laughs> you may not need a yeah. teleprompter if you can't read. But uh, I bought it for myself. <laughs> that's a that's a cupcake. <laughs> I see a bird. Uh, a couple of of uh, things pointing to the left. Shut up. <laughs> it's, those are called letters, Todd. I hate you. Um, but I bought it again two, about two years ago for myself. Uh, eventually, trying to do videos at home, but I, I never really. Ended I up guess doing I should videos. order the wide one then. For get us. the wide one now. I think it's more for the sev uh, whatever the pluses. And then the last thing about the hotel, I wonder what they think when we're pulling uh, tripods yeah. and LED lights into the hotel room, and I'm screaming hashtag porno, cursing. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I didn't curse that much, um, but I probably said mf and the c word a few times. <laughs> You did? When I messed up reading. Oh. When, when I you're couldn't like read screaming, good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. You know, the normal so, Jared yeah. flip outs. Usually here they can't hear me because I got brick walls. Yeah. 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 So. No, yeah. I always get uh, concerned when I'm bringing tripods and a bunch of lights and uh, cameras down the hallway and the maid sees and me. And Jared's walking into the place with his shirt off. Exactly. <laughs> Weird. Super tight shirt. I shoot raw. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> clearly it's a porno. <laughs> anyway, this guess, was a I guess super you don't want any condoms from the concierge. <laughs> <laughs> this was a super long intro, nor different than normal, because we big did a recap. lot. Uh, so that's, a, that's a big recap. We should probably jump into the photo news right after we say that this week's episode is brought to you by My Gear Vault. I don't even know if you have a My Gear Vault screen. Oh, yeah. what? There it is. Come on it's, now. It's uh, My Gear Come Vault. On, son. Okay, Todd. Thank you. <laughs> you can uh, d input, organize, and protect your gear. If you don't have My Gear Vault, go to MyGearVault.com for iOS and Android. It's expanding. Get your insurance quote through there. It's really good. And let's get into the it's photo like news. It's the best app ever. Uh, yeah, Stephen. Yeah. Quite, quite possibly. I'm moving your parrot. Can you move your parrot? Caca! And, and you know, the photo news fix is also brought to you by um, uh, Simba Killer, who gave us $50. Whoa! Simba Killer? Um, Why is he and killing he Simba? He just wanted to say that he really appreciates the content you put out. He just started this as a hobby, and you are one of the few to put fun in videos. Hey, can we all give him one clap for $50? Yep. Three, Stephen, get ready. Three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> what the? I at meant, the same time. So I, I, it's three, two, oh, one, it, clap. It on three, or, or it's on one. Ready? Uh, no, uh, it's on uh, uh, three, uh, two, one, clap. Okay. Three, two, one. Oh, God, God damn it. Todd, sorry. for real. I'm sorry. You ready? Uh, okay. Three, two, one. You guys Great. suck. Great. Dan, get out of this show. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get to photo news before uh, we blow away. Well, back thank to you, Kansas. Simba Killer or whatever it, the name was. <laughs> and again, we're going to address Great a lot name. of the uh, super chats and a lot of the questions you had at the end of the show. So if you have questions, put them in there yep. as questions. Yep. 
A uh, lot of news this week for WPPI, a lot of new camera announcements, uh, like we just talked about, a lot of new lenses. Sigma announced two new art lenses at WPPI this week. The first one, it's dubbed the Boca Master. What the hell was that? That's what I said. Oh, too. I know what it was. <laughs> I, wait, hold on. Is that? What hold is, on. Yeah, hold what, on. What, wait, let's I, go back to that. I know what Who it made is. This? Is that Puppet Master? Metallica? Oh, Lord, Dan. It just ma- Exit life! It makes Dan, me feel like Sigma's e- like going away. That's what I said. Yeah. I'm like, it's like rest in peace, Wait, Sigma. Sigma's dying, but it's Puppet Master. I came, Metallica. When I I'm came, like, Dan, I get it, but we have to explain that, definitely. And, and also, let's explain this. I came into the factory day, and he's got music playing. I think there's like a sacrificial <laughs> lamb upstairs. Like, <laughs> what were you listening to, Dan? He's playing some nine-inch Some sort nails. of death metal crap. Uh, what's Who? It called? I hear white white zombie. Zombie. Oh, wait. Dragon Lord, this is a bird, brother, 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 That's that's all the live I, audience right now. I had to right think. Now. I'm like, what the hell is this? Uh, so anyway, it's dubbed the Boca Master. Uh, it's a 105 millimeter f1.4 lens, which Sigma notes uh, has both the in focus and out of focus areas of the photograph equally satisfying to the eye. The lens features 17 optical elements arranged in 12 groups, which Sigma says is an uncommonly large number uh, of elements for a prime lens. Now, it comes at a price. It's huge. Uh, huge. With a filter diameter of 105 millimeters. Really? It also weighs in at nearly four pounds. Well, that's why it has a tripod collar. Exactly. And it has a height of 5.2 inches. Now, to compare, your Nikon 105 1. 4 has a filter thread of 82 millimeters. Right, 82 millimeters. And it's more than an inch shorter. It's an inch shorter. And about a pound and a it's, half lighter. You're telling me it weighs two and a half pounds? It weighs two and a half pounds. <laughs> oh, really? It doesn't feel <laughs> like Yours that. is about 2.2 pounds math? or something. Uh, now, it's so heavy, again, like you said, it comes with its own tripod collar as well. So that's it's a too giant, heavy. giant lens. Maybe for video it would be cool, but that's too heavy. And again, they said it's an uncommonly large number of elements for a prime lens, so I guess that's why it's so big. Now, hopefully it will create excellent bokeh. I don't give a shit it's the about bokeh, bokeh guys. <laughs> like, like, I love when people are getting off on the new bow they're like oh it's creamy it's so smooth the bokeh i'm like you wouldn't know good bokeh if it smacked you in the face well the whole point of bokeh is to be out of focus i don't and i love when people bokeh. like zoom in on bokeh and they're comparing bokeh it's like it's not meant to be the focus of the picture mm. i get front element bokeh and stuff like that i totally uh. get that but now the question is though do you go to with sigma's 135 18 for well, even more compression how much is the nikon one the nikon one is about twenty two hundred dollars this thing could be twenty five hundred dollars i I don't think so. Sigma's always been known to be cheaper. Until they're not. Well, they're fifty one four is more expensive than Nikon. But fifty, but Nikon's fifty one four doesn't have the same optical quality of the Sigma. Nine hundred and some dollars, Stephen. But you compare Canon's fifty one four or fifty one two, no, fifty one two, I should say, and that one is well, way more expensive. Well, this is going to be an expensive piece of glass. Yeah, and heavy. We don't know the price yet, um, or the availability. Nineteen ninety nine ninety seven. But I think it'll be up there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Sigma also unveiled the first art series macro lens, which is a 70 millimeter f2.8 lens, which comes with an extended barrel for a magnification one to one ratio uh, and a minimum close focus distance of about 10 inches, normal macro lens. And again, no pricing or availability announced just mm-hmm. yet, but it'll probably come out in like two weeks. They'll tell us the pricing of it. How just many? like the 14 to 24. Two weeks. We did pick up that 14 to 24, and it's definitely tight. So the 14 to 24, we talked about this earlier. The issue is that it's so weatherproof, they say, that it has to be that tight. I disagree. Which like, I disagree, too, because uh, the Canon 11 to 24, the, it's easily. And the 14 to 24 from Nikon, I can sit there with barely easily touch do it. this. Whenever these lenses are so tight to turn, it takes your focus away from shooting, and then you get your angles wrong. I mean, you, you literally have to grip it like twice to really get a full from 14 to 24 or vice versa. Yeah, Stephen, from, from yeah. 6 to 12. S- 6 to midnight. Oh, is that what it is? <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, moving on to more Sigma news. The lens manufacturer revealed seven prime art series lens lenses with uh, Sony mounts, which is huge oh. for Sony mirrorless users. Sigma says the full-frame glass will give Sony users the highest level of optical performance. The more lenses, than G Master? Uh, who knows? The lenses include their 14 millimeter f1.8, 20 f1.4, 24 1.4, 35 1.4, 50 1.4, and the brand new 70 to 28, 28 macro, 85 1.4, the 105 1.4, and 135 1.8. Basically, their entire prime art lens lineup. It's pretty game changing and huge, huge, huge announcement news. right there. Now, prior to the WPPI announcement, 
Their lens lineup only came in Canon, Nikon, and Sigma mounts. Uh, the lens will deliver the same optical quality as before, but will also feature a newly developed control algorithm that optimizes the autofocus drive and maximizes the data transmission speed. Here's a little factoid that some of you may not know. Because that's the question. How's it going to be with focus? Well, it's going to be native. So, I mean, as close to native as possible, you're not using an adapter. But a little factoid is that if you already have Sigma lenses, you can have Sigma adapt, adopt, adapt those lenses for Sony. Yeah. So if you have Nikon Sigma lenses, you can then have them adapted to be put on Sony bodies. So if you are going to make the, the switch and jump there and you have Sigma, you got some glass. I what's also, that, I've that never... Cost? That's a great question, Todd. I did not have that answer. Thank you for asking. Yep. Anybody out there want to look that up and tell me in the, what's in, he the asking? in the comments? The cost of the conversion. Oh, oh. Now, how I, much was your conversion, though? Uh, when I converted, um, it was like... Five ninety nine. That was more five dollars and ninety nine cents. Yeah. It was. <laughs> now I will say uh, I did try out the Sigma mount for Canon cameras, and I've always been skeptical about autofocus and stuff like that with a native adapter. And it works great with the five D Mark III, at least at their booth. I was just messing around with the new fourteen to twenty four and the twelve to twenty four, and it was hitting focus like crazy. Mm. So I definitely want to get one of their prime lenses. I'm thinking about that one hundred five one four when it comes out. Too big. It's big, but it's the Boca Master, bro. Dude, 105.14, not a, too big. You love Boca your 105.14. I do, because I can handhold it. It does look like a monster. I am not it's, putting a camera on a huge. tripod, yeah. a monopod, even if it has Well, gas you can probably it. still handhold it, but it's... It's four it's pounds, be heavy. man. Yeah. It's probably heavier than your body, for sure. I mean, it's you need to work out more like me and Steven. I mean, if you'd work out like Steven and I, you'd have no issue with exactly. any of that stuff. Yeah, I mean, I have no out issues with, holding any lenses. As he starts flexing. Uh, now, Sigma does say... Oh, by the way, Ken has the... Ken definitely hikes. I'm sure. His he looks quads, like a hiker. I mean, he's got the biggest... He, um, what are those things called? Calves. 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 Dude, bodybuilders would kill to have Ken Rockwell's calves. Johnny Drama would kill to have... I mean, those calves <laughs> <laughs> were huge. Good one, Steve. Yeah, I try. Um, so they say it will work perfect with the Sony's continuous AF and high-speed autofocus system, uh, which weren't available before when using an adapter and non-native Sigma glass, obviously. Sigma says this is just the beginning as well. They will have more E-mount art lenses in the near future. The lens company will also offer, like you were saying, a mount conversion service that lets you convert your existing collection of art lenses to a different Do you have to pray mount. before you convert it? Now, no pricing or availability announced just yet for any of these converted lenses. Uh, the question is, though, is Sony going to be happy or mad about this announcement? Because it's certainly going to bring a lot of new users to Sony. I think it's Sony. a double-edged double -edged sword. I agree. Like a jagged edge. Yeah. Mm. Catch-22. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They like it because more people will be buying Sony because they can use the Sigma, and there's also more glass, but they may not like it because they may make more money selling glass. I mean, there was a private presentation when we were uh, at WPPI, and Sony had us in that one back room. Or not, the hotel, I mean, actually. And they were saying how they're not just a body company, they're oh. also a lens manufacturer. Are we allowed to say that, Steven? No. Did you just give out some They're obviously a lens manufacturer. They I make lenses. They just did do that. They, but do they? <laughs> um, but, you know, I think this is huge for them as well. Yeah, I, I, I really agree. do. I think that's, that's uh, Sony... You know, the, the arguments for a while for me are that you don't have enough glass. And now, yeah. You have, you know, you have your 12 to 24, 24 to 70, 70 to 200 natives. You don't, have a, you don't have the fast one. You don't have that 105. You don't really have macro. You don't, I mean, yeah, you have 85, 85 14, 14. And you can get some of the Zeiss lenses, but yep. the Zeisses are super expensive. You can and buy you all the, the manual Sigma. focus ones, too, uh, or obviously get an adapter, but that doesn't work very well. No, I don't, I don't accept an adapter as a solution to anything. I agree, especially when you're shooting... Uh, photos and not video. My question is, though, will, will Tamron follow suit? Uh, the answer there is yes, Stephen. Yeah. Now, Tiffin announced their new monopod with a literal gas pedal. Hoya! It's called the Steadicam Air. The pneumatic monopod works by adjusting the height using gas lift. This solves the issue of having to fiddle the turning and you know lock mechanisms for quick height adjustments when going from shooting on your knees to a standing position, which you actually demonstrated when we were there at their booth. And Meh. you liked it. Meh. I liked it for video, personally. Meh. Now, the oh, new monopod comes in two different height 
uh, weight configurations, a 15-pound and a 25-pound version, one designed for holding still cameras, and then one designed why, why for broadcast one? cameras. That was a terrible video. That was I a like that video a lot, to be honest. Look at this guy. <laughs> Oh yes, he's I'm hyped so now. He's got, he's got a good problem. One. Is there. look how far look he has to it. lean over to look at this freaking camera because it doesn't get tall enough. Well, that's what I said. Is it didn't get tall enough? My issue was that you really had to press down yes. on it to go back. You had down. to be strong. Oh. Now to go up, obviously it's it's airlifted and it was fine, but going down, you really had to push on that. That's what she said. <laughs> God. Uh, that's so horrible. there's also one locking mechanism that allows for 360 degree rotation. Uh, or you can lock it for a static shot, which is really nice. And it's not inexpensive. <laughs> it comes in at about $500 for gas the 25 cheap, pound Steven. version. What was that? You gas? mean gas? Gas isn't gas, cheap, bro. Gas? Gas yes. isn't cheap. Gas. Uh, 25 pound version is 500 bucks, and then $400 for the 15 pound version. Again, one more for still shooters, one more for video shooters. And we did test this out. I did like it for video because you can kind of do a slight jib up yeah. and do pans and stuff like that. So it wasn't bad. But again, you still had to push really hard down to uh, what's going on here. I don't know what Todd's. He wants to see this guy again. Oh. No, I'm just you guys are talking. So Oh, look. Oh, oh, oh look at that. Check oh. out my check out my rod. Yeah, look. Check I'm that leaning out. Whoa, check out my so monopod. Oh, let me see that. Dang it. OK, here we go. Yay. There I go. Yes, that's so All right, amazing. next news story. <laughs> Introducing Canon's first 4K mirrorless camera. It's called the M50. You actually did a preview on this. I actually got my hands on it, too. And we did. Yeah, we got our hands on it's in that WPPI. So light. It's super light. Canon says the camera is an all-around entry-level camera with an extensive list of user-friendly features that encourages users to broaden their creative visions. Top-level specs for the camera include a 24-megapixel APS-C sensor with Canon's first Digic 8 processor, it has a native ISO range of 100 to 25,600 with 99 phase detect and 143 contrast detect AF points, along with Canon's first eye detection AF. Now, it's not the same as Canon's old IF that people are comparing it to, where it's literally like your eye trying moving. to find your pupil and see what focus point you're yeah, looking at. If you it's guys didn't that. know, there was a camera back in the 90s, the EO, uh, EOS 3 or something, yeah. where you could use your where your eye was looking. It would pick the focus point. You would point. look at that focus point, because there were like nine of them. So you would look at the focus point, and that's where the focus would shift to. For mm. me, it kind of wouldn't work out. <laughs> It'd be just going back and forth. It'd be, it would explode. It would be like, you are an asshole. Yeah. Uh, Stop looking everywhere. Oh, man. I didn't even think about that. Right. I have a condition. So wouldn't work out yeah, too well. Yeah, but I was talking to a lot of people at the Sony event, and they were all relating it to that. And I'm like, no, it's, it's going to be like Sony's IAF, where it's literally locking on right. the eye when you're shooting. I didn't even think that it was going to be where you look. Yeah, yeah. So this thing will shoot at 10 frames a second in one shot or 7 frames a second in continuous. Uh, the M50 also has a 3-inch variable touchscreen LCD, which does have the awesome touch and drag AF as well, which we really liked in the other EOS M models like the M5. And then video-wise, it shoots 4K at up to 24 frames per second, or 25 if you're in the UK, but also has no dual-pixel AF in 4K mode, mm -hmm. only in 1080p mode. Uh -huh. And it only does contrast AF when you're in 4K mode, and it has a very heavy crop of 1.7 times on, on top, top of, 1 .6. of the already APS-C crop, which is what, like a 2-point-something crop? That's it's 1.6, then it's times 1.7. So your 15-millimeter kit lens becomes a 24 with 1.6, and then 24 times 1.7 gives like a 40. you a 40-millimeter yeah. lens. Now, it does come with a decent EVF uh, at 2.36 million dots. It, can I give my opinion? Uh, I'm almost done giving the specs. Let me just finish that off. And for walking and talking shots, it has 5-axis digital IS with dual sensing IS, so it'll work. It'll pair with your lenses IS for smoother footage, although I do wish it was optical IBIS. And then it'll hit shelves in April and cost $780 for the body only. And this will sit between their current M6 and M5 lineup. Although I do kind of think the M5 seems a little outdated at this point. You might as well get the M50. Yeah. Save 200 bucks. I mean, it's nice that it has the viewfinder built in, the rotatable, flippy out rotatable screen. Todd, what do you think this, about this for Morgan? Uh, I think this is probably a sweet spot for... Under a pound. Fl yeah. That was the big thing when she... What did we have? The 77D. And she was like, I can't hold this so i've been on the market looking for something that she could use Tons on the market readily i, I I'm, I'm willing to buy something it's um, great for her especially the eos m lenses they're like literally they're plastic yeah they're super yeah, yeah, light yeah. the whole thing's gonna but probably she need, weigh yeah like a pound she needs she needs the dual 
pixel. She needs to be able to monitor it. So the flip out screen, the dual pixel, the 4K thing, it's not a deal breaker for nope. me. Um, well, I I th- I, but I do think it's a perfect like vlog style, like YouTuber type camera from what I can see. Now, the question I would have about the 4K and the, and the autofocus or the lack thereof, could you touch it and still focus on yourself? Yes. It just won't track it, after the fact. It so, does actually still yeah. have face detection. It just doesn't track as well. Now, we did have hands-on with it at WPPI, and I did check out the 4K autofocus, the contrast detect one, and it still tracked and worked pretty good. Now, if you're in lower light situations or, I don't know, a harder to focus situation, it might not track that well, but at WPPI, it did track the rep's face pretty good, and I was going in and huh. out panning and it worked i'd be interested so, to, I, i'd be so it's just not the dual pixel it's autofocus. not going to be as good yes yeah yeah, yeah. all right that's not but a deal breaker works. It's, not like it's, it's not like there's zero autofocus when it comes to 4k it's something yeah. that i want to try out to take to paris or something to vlog yeah you know I, i'll miss the 2.8 lens and i'll miss the full frame yeah but if i can carry something light around to make a vloggy McVloggers in and get a APS-C size sensor. The fact that it's a bigger sensor than one inch sensor means a lot. For vlogging, I think it's great. Uh, for anything serious, I wouldn't use it because it's got also the IPB compression. Uh, it's all I is left out, like most of their lower end cameras, which is a shame. Um, so it is pretty highly compressed, the MP4 file in the end, and you can't do much after the fact. But it could be, it could be a great entry-level, inexpensive camera for somebody wanting to dive into video. Of course, of course, yeah. Very, it it but, definitely know, still it, does the job for the yep, most part, but yep. you're not making cinematic films with this is what yep. I'm saying. Um, and then we have uh, another welcome announcement from Canon introducing the world's first flash with auto-intelligence bounce. Auto Intelligent Bounce, the 470 EX AI, they're calling it. Gary Fong model. <laughs> the flash will move on its own to figure out the optimal bounce angle for lighting your subject. This is cool. Now, it's aimed more towards beginners. Canon says the flash could help alleviate the stigma attached to flash photography as being too difficult while serving as a gateway for photographers looking to expand their skill set, especially those who recently stepped up from smartphone photography. So clearly, beginners. Uh, here's how it works it'll fire two pre flashes. One to figure out the distance to subject and one for distance to ceiling. It will then automatically do the math and set the angle of bounce according to the two distances. Now, the cool thing is that if you go from horizontal shooting to vertical, it will automatic, automatically reorient itself back to the perfect bounce angle. So you can keep flipping from vertical to horizontal shooting, which is really cool. Uh, you can also set a custom bank bounce angle if you prefer a different look, and the bounce will reset to the angle oh, no. as you rotate. Did he just do a Dutch camera. angle? Did he just do a Dutch angle, Stephen? Yeah, bro. I'm sure yeah, it was bro. for video purposes. Uh, no, no. He don't care. He Hashtag do no Dutch, Dutch angle. angle. Now spec wise, it's got a guide number. There it is, right there. Yep. That's he don't Dutch. care. <laughs> that is not. That picture is going to look terrible. It's got a guide number of 47 and about every other normal spec of a Canon flash, so I won't repeat that here. Now, I do want to note that the AI bounce will only work with cameras from 2014 and newer, mm-hmm. so not your 5D3, mm-hmm. not your original 60, mm-hmm. all that mm-hmm. stuff going back mm-hmm. won't work with them. And it'll be available in April for a price tag of $400, which is pretty good uh, compared to the $600 RT600 and the other Canon flashes that they have. It looks really cool. Yeah. Really cool, really futuristic. Canon finally made something that's uh, revolutionary and not evolutionary. Maybe Jared will actually use Flash now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then we have the last thing, what we kind of already talked about earlier, what everyone's been talking about this week. Sony just announced their latest entry-level full-frame camera, the a7 III. Think of it basically as like the a9 and a7R III had a baby. This would be it. At $2,000, this thing packs a punch. It has a 24-megapixel full-frame BSI CMOS sensor, which I can verify it is an all-new sensor, not the same as the a7 II. They did say that there. It has a native ISO range of 100 to 51,200, which Sony also claims will get you 15 stops of dynamic range. At lower ISO. At its base ISO. Ken Rockwell will be very thankful of that. It shoots at 10 frames a second in both mechanical. Ken Ken Rockwell. Oh, my friend. Your friend. Your best friend. But it shoots 10 frames per second in both mechanical and in electronic shutter, uh, depending on the camera settings. But I would stick to the 8 frames per second high mode. Uh, it also has a buffer of 40 uncompressed RAW images, which is really good. It borrows the same AF system as the A9, like we talked oh. about earlier. 693 autofocus points with 93% frame coverage, which is huge, better than the A7R3. And it has Sony's excellent IAF that we all love and focuses and tracks twice as fast, they say, as its predecessor. 
Also has five axis IBIS with five stops of shake reduction, same as the A7R3. And the body is the exact same as well as the A7R3. New joystick, new Z battery, dual SD card slots, one being UHS-2, which we hate, but it is what it is. A three-inch tilting touchscreen, doesn't tilt down all the way, No, it right? just, it flips out. Here, give me the camera, yeah, please. Yeah, it's like this. Same as this. It's, it's really bad. I mean, it's not, a, it's not the end of the world, but it's... Like, that's as far as it flips down. But it flips up all the way, if not a little more. No, that's it. That's it. Yeah. That's but flipping it. it down, yeah, it really doesn't. Flipping have it much, down is like cool, great. Yep. I'm gonna, I can. Yeah, there's there's not much you can do with with the flip screen there. Stupid camera. <laughs> Just you know, throw you, it out. You, you throw the trash. Good, but we were talking earlier. Like, I wonder if Canon does have like a proprietary like a patent of or, some or sort. They must on with the that fli flip out because nobody hardly has that very angle articulating screen. Now the GH5 has one, and obviously just camcorders from the past and stuff like that. I don't know why other companies aren't following suit and making these very angle yep. touch screens in every camera. I they're agree. just doing the tilt screen. And all the tilt screens, notice, they're all slightly different. Like Nikons, Sony's, Pentax. They have their weird thing. five angle one or whatever. Um, now, this thing also has a 2.3 million dot EVF. It is less resolution, like we talked about, than the A7R3. And then one big update from the A7R3 is the video quality. The A7 III will shoot full frame 4K with no pixel binning, takes a 6K readout, and then down samples the 4K for a much sharper one-to-one -one video, just like the A9. But it only does this in 24P and 25P modes. So the full frame mode will essentially be better quality than that Super 35 crop mode for once. And it'll do the standard 120 frames per second like you guys saw earlier in 1080p. Looks great. All other video features are exactly the same as the A7R3. And it'll hit two hit stores next month for $2,000 again. And hopefully it hits our mailbox Tuesday. Next week, yeah. I mean, this just it crushes the competition in that price range. Yeah, there's really nothing. Canon doesn't offer anything. Nikon D750, tremendous camera for the time. I mean, uh, it's like 6D Mark II or this. Uh, Obviously, yeah, the A7 III just blows it out of the water. Totally. In everything. Totally. Minus not having a very angle touch Doesn't screen. have the touch screen, so yeah. that's not everything. Minus one. But we're going to do a full real-world review on the A7 III. We already shot three quarters of it. Yeah. Still got to bring it back and shoot a couple OTFs here. And, and open couple, raw files. A couple beauty shots. Do the, out, do the outro. Do the actual review where we're reviewing the image quality. Oh, right. We could, we could technically open them. and I don't think Capture One opens them yet. It does. No, they, it doesn't. They had Capture One there. But they, they were, were talking about it on the bus that it didn't. Oh, yet. They, they were opening it. It's not it updated there. yet. Who Maybe was it was A7R3 then. Did that you I see saw. somebody opening I it? I saw people opening it. Oh. Well, from what they said, that it wasn't available yet. Oh. I don't know. I personally haven't used it, so I can't really comment on it. Exactly. And that's photo news. Yay. That's photo news, yeah. A lot of news this week, a lot of stuff at WPPI. Now it's time for Gear of the Week. I'm breaking out this secret stash thing. That's it. That's gear of the week. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm just getting <laughs> out two different things. Just give me a second. It's going to take a minute. Just, uh, just take your time. Prograde. Prograde sent me a whole bunch of cards. This is a Prograde card. Lexar? Oh, Prograde. This is a Lexar card. <laughs> the Wait, only difference is... I the, can't the, tell the difference. ...is the way that the stripe spins. Well, yeah. I mean, at least visually. Yeah. We need to... And I will say, even inspecting the back of it looks exactly, exactly the same, but that's also every UHS-2 SD card. You can't tell the inside. So so it's hard to tell. These are ProGrade cards. They came right before we went to Las Vegas. I used two ProGrade 64 gig cards in my uh, A7 III. So I formatted it, and I just went to town using it. Figure I, I'll put two in the camera. Wow, that Whoa. wind is crazy outside. Yeah, I don't know if people can hear that. That's crazy. Sounds that like storm a monster is serious. out there. Holy Jesus. We haven't looked outside in an hour and three minutes. Wow, it's... My car might be, like, on the next block. <laughs> That's cars all the way down the street. It was already parked on the sidewalk. That was... Wow. That is a gush of all... Gu that was a gust of wind that was insane. It went on for, like, eight seconds. Todd's getting up. You know something's breaking. Oh, great. You know great. something's breaking. I'm shooting at, like, F2 on Todd's angle, too. He's going to be nice and out of focus. Anyway... <laughs> You can't even see Todd. Oh, there you can see him. There he is. Todd, open up the window real quick. You might as well while you're there. Show the audience. Uh, oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a diffuse shade and an actual... Oh, you can't even see. It's blown out it's the window. So, it's so white out there. <laughs> well, it, is it, it snow, Todd? It's Kensington. 
It's Kent. Oh, yeah. All right. Anyway, let's get back to this. Cut to me, Dan. Todd, is everything still there or is Dorothy out there? Yeah, so we put Steven used pro grade cards in his camera. I used two so cards and it was great. It didn't fail. We can't really tell you much beyond that we used them and they didn't fail. Yeah, I mean, you got to use them for a year or two until you really know the uh, durability of these cards. But no SD card is durable because they're SD cards. That's the thing. They're plastic. You just can easily break them. Now, I will say again, I keep bringing up the price. The price is much more affordable than your standard uh, SanDisk or Lexar card. So ProGrade's a great option. So by far. what? By what? Half half the price? Three half, quarters? About half, half the, the price? price? Now, keep in mind, they're 200 me megabytes up. a second uh, read speed. They explain that to I me, I think, too. like, 150 right. But Lexar's 300 and the same with SanDisk. So there's a little different difference in speed, top speed at least. But do you really need to go that fast on most things? If you're shooting video, you don't. It's more the transfer after the fact, but yeah. I don't think you'll see much of a difference there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, most slots don't even support UHS-2 anyway. Yeah, my slot doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. What do we got next? <laughs> well, it's time for flying solo, Todd. You're up. Todd's up. Oh, thanks. Did you know this was happening? Well, yeah, I just put flying solo up on the screen here. So, yeah. Um, anyway, one first question I have is uh, Dave TV13 uh, wanted to just thank Stephen for the hearing aid friendly audio for oh. all of us with low hearing issues. Oh. The best audio on YouTube hands down. Thank you, Dave. Todd. One, Ready? two, three. Yeah, as he's like, ah. Oh shit. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Ste Dave. Not um, the best to Dave clap. TV. Yep. Yeah. Um, but but thank you, Dave. We spent a lot of time with the audio, obviously. Steven takes a lot show. of we take we all take a lot of pride in how the show looks. Yeah. And yeah. How it sounds. Now, the live show is not as compressed <laughs> as after the fact. By the way, Jared, can you, can you stop? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I just keep hearing sounds over there from, uh, yeah, from behind you. Like it's, a it's a little smelly, chair. too. It's don't nonstop. Know what, don't know what you're talking about. <clears throat> um, but, yeah, the live show is not as compressed and not as uh, you know, bold as the podcast version, but it's, it's good enough. It's really damn good compared to what's yeah. out there in the world. So thank you, Dave. What up, Todd? Uh, Stephanie Vetterly Photography says, Hi, guys. Hi, Hi Stephanie. Does the Steph Nikon D850 have high-speed sync capabilities? Need HSS budget is D850 or thereabouts. Thanks. Uh, For you flash? You need to use one of those. It should be the flash that needs to yes, have the capability, not the body, the right? Body. The body is one, one two fiftieth of a second sync. Uh, they don't do one five hundredth of a second. So no, most are 250, but the the HSS support should be the flash that allows for that. Correct? Yes, like the I haven't used them, the Pocket Wizard stuff. Pocket Wizard has those options. The the thing well, that and goes your normal top. just flash that goes on the body will have that support too. Does it? Yeah, you can put in the HSS mode. Certain flashes. Oh, certain flashes. None yeah, of, not none every of the flash. flashes that I've used in the uh, mine's from a decade ago, oh. so I haven't done that. Yeah, my Canon ones. What else, Tiad? Well, Kevin Krause has a question. Do you prefer circular fisheye or reticular ultra-wide? You mean rectilinear? Yes. Well, he says, oh, yeah, Definitely not circular fisheye. He fish definitely eye. said that. No, I, I prefer rectilinear. Did or you does it depend on a specific subject matter? No, I, very rarely are you going to throw a fisheye on there. Do you say oh, rectilinear say, on purpose? No, it is rectilinear. I thought it was rectilinear. I don't know. I've always heard it as You're like radiators. <laughs> radiators. And gas. And gas. Re and rectilinear and ultra-wide. Legs. Um, and I but yeah, rectilinear all day for those perfect straight lines. I, I would never use a circular. The, the only time we used a circular fisheye was when I was doing the postman fro. The little uh, peephole. Steven used his 8 millimeter Sigma. Sigma. Now, I, I will <laughs> say I use it on occasion for shows, and I'll use the lens correction in Lightroom. Well, and it true. does work, but you need to make sure your subject is exact dead center in that frame so there's no stretching going on exactly. in post. It's a weird look. Super but, chat. Yeah. Well, uh, Zach Kurtz, he asked, uh, and he also donated to us. He said, hi, Thank fellas. You. Love the show. As a hobbyist who just got into using a micro four-thirds camera, is there a camera you specifically recommend to use for street photography and some landscape? I have plenty of pan and Olympus lenses. Um, I guess stick with Olympus then. I, I go mirrorless Olympus all day. I'm then. not a fan of micro four-thirds personally, but that's... You already have glass, then stick with the them. I, I, I know Brandon from Alan's camera who hikes a lot. Uh -huh. 
likes his Olympus because of the size of the lenses are much smaller. He likes the size factor because when he's hiking and he's got 40, 50 pounds of stuff on his back, this camera doesn't take up much space. So there's that for that. Yeah, I think small, light, and silent. That's all you need, those factors. Yeah, that. Small, light, and silent. Yep. Here's another question from Anthony himself. Anthony? I guess. He says Anthony himself. It's a A7 III or 1DX Mark II. Which to buy? That, that, that you can't cut to me, Dan. <laughs> Anthony. <laughs> Anthony. Anthony. Himself. Let me, let me say this to you right about I'm sorry, now. What was the question, though? The A7 III or what? 1DX Mark, Mark II. II. Oh. oh. Like, no. The answer is no. Oh, thank you. The Moving answer on. is you can't compare which or the other. One weighs 16 pounds. One weighs 2 pounds. It's apples and One is $2,000. One's $6,000. Yeah. They are not comparable. Yeah. If I had my choice, I'm going with a 6D Mark II. Sorry, 6D Mark II. A 1DX <laughs> Mark II. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. If you gave me either of the choices of those two, I'm taking the 1DX Mark II, but... It you all depends. You can't compare. You can't, you can't ask me to compare the two. Do you want the truth? He just did. Now, if he was strictly shooting video, you can compare the two, I think. And the Maybe A7 III does video. have better you specs. You. Yeah, he didn't give but me any photo, more details. But still photo-wise, yeah. you can't compare them. Can't compare. Yeah. Two different cameras. And the battery's better. Well, of course. What do we got? Another time? one? No, no. When we go silent, we want you to stay quiet. All right. <laughs> That's what we're going for, Todd. Dead air. They don't pay us to put the show on and have dead air. Now do that. Well, they don't pay us. Well, some of them. Well, you know what? Some people do pay us to put the show true. on. <laughs> Speaking of which, Super Chat. <laughs> Rodrigo's more, more as, uh, more as. Todd is the worst name reader in the history of names. Uh, ten dollars. Threw us ten dollars, and he just that's for Todd's lunch. So that's for my lunch. So. You're going to need that $10 because that's Well, actually, you get less than me. $10, Todd, because YouTube takes 45%. Really? Do the math. You get $6.50. 45%? Okay, wow. Yeah, YouTube takes 45% of all ads. Wow. Uh, Tyler C. threw us five bucks. Have you guys ever thought about doing co a cosplay shoot for a five-minute portrait? I thought that was really interesting. Yeah, oh, we'll man. go to a furry convention for that. that I love those girls with elf ears. And tails. What was the movie? Uh... Wish I was here. Wish I was here. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching it the other day <laughs> oh, yeah. when he's banging the yeah, fur. Yeah. Oh man, <laughs> such an um, odd scene. <laughs> I liked it. Of course you. Shout did. out to uh, Moments Photography. He just wanted to say hashtag um, Lego Steven. You're welcome. And uh, Jay Sand apparently just has doesn't have much to do. He threw us quite a few and just uh, whoop whoop, as well as some other things. Thank you. And uh, Jonathan Paolo. Threw us a little something. He wants a real-world review of Ken Rockwell, <laughs> which I think would be great. Oh, I mean, man. we should take him out for well, a run. Real quick on that topic, we tried to interview him. I, I told Jared, I'm like, we need to interview him. I've got the Zoom. I've got, luckily, all the mics I need. I brought them yeah. just in case as a backup, and we just didn't have time. We didn't have time. We didn't have time. Hopefully, I'll give him a call. Uh, we can dial him in through the box. That'd it be would great. be I Ken can talk. Oh, he will talk forever. That'll be a three-hour interview. <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, shout-out to Gregory Flats. Just because, he just wanted to give us a shout-out. Patrick Knowles, he wants to know, uh, when does it make sense to buy an A7R3? Uh, right now? I, I mean, when you're doing high-resolution images. It's oh, did he say A7R3 or A7R3? He said R3. A7R3. Oh, well, th so this is this is that discussion. I want to do the ultimate battle. I requested the other two cameras we don't have, an the, A9 and the 3. Now, keep in mind, I'm sure at some point we're going to have an A7S3. Sure. I don't know when, but hopefully soon. But between the three, like, so when would you want the R? Yeah, if you want more resolution. The most detailed resolution, because it also has pixel shift, which I believe the A7 III doesn't have. Yeah, so, yes. That's my answer. Yeah, uh, that's the main difference there. If you're doing landscapes, it's more expensive, high-end portraits, <laughs> even for weddings, I don't. I mean, it's up. To, it's up to you. I get away with twenty some megapixels in the D5. I don't use the D850. People are like, twenty four is plenty. They're like, why don't you take the D850 with you? Because twelve megapixels was enough when I was shooting yep. with the D3s. Now I did notice also flipping through some of the menus. There, there's little things taken out of the menu from the A7 R3 to the S3. I mean, not the S3, the A7 III. Um, not much that I could notice that would justify spending an extra $1,200 on the R3 for me personally. Right. But if, if you want the high resolution, that's the one to go. Yep. 
Uh, I, I, related to this interview you're talking about, um, Neil Malone has a good question. Would Rockwell interview be raw talk or would it be JPEG talk? <laughs> oh, it's funny. Good that call. Is funny. We would probably have to cross off <laughs> raw for the show and make it JPEG. Oh, um, that's great, man. P. Menzel wants to know, given that they're available for around 500 pounds, he's across the pond here, how would the D700 hold up for Ooh. indoor sports these D700. days? I have a no. 70 to 200. That's a long in the no. tooth camera right there. New. No. New. No. No, you're better off with a D. I mean, I know it's 500 pounds. That's heavy, but you could get a D7300. Do they make a 300? They skipped from three, right? I and think they, they went, went right to, to five. five. Even something like that's going to be better. I mean, yeah, the D700 was a fantastic wedding camera back in the day. It had the uh, D3S sensor in it, right? Or was it a D4 sensor? It was D3S sen- D3 sensor? D3S sensor. The, D, the, the D300 was cropped, right? And then yes. D700 was full frame? Yes. Yeah. The D700 okay. was the, the baby D3. Got you. Uh, people love that camera, but no, I wouldn't. I would not go that far back right now for sports. No, not at all. I mean, yeah. Now, D seven fifties are pretty affordable now too. Compared the D seven fifty, even a D si- even a D six ten. Yeah, even a D six ten. They might limit you ergonomic wise and functionality of the camera, but it's still better quality overall. Yes. What else we got, Todd? M uh, M. Or M and M, I am not sh- quite sure how he wants that pronounced. Um, <laughs> just wanted to thank us for all the content, following as much as I can, and he can't get enough. Thank you. You're thank welcome. Thank you. And um, again, shout out to Simba Killer for that <laughs> that generous donation. <laughs> just please change your I name. I don't know why he doesn't like Simba. I know. I mean, I think he's all right, but you know, whatever. And so, guys. Thank you for all your support again for logging in and watching live. We hit over a thousand, which is always great to see. Oh, it's incredible! If you uh, would like to tune in live, if you aren't tuning in live because you're watching this at home and you're not actually live right meow when we're recording this, because we, we're live right now when you're recording, but you're not live <gasps> if you're listening to it at home, then 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time Fridays is when we like to go live. We hit it today, right on time, and uh, tune in live. Don't forget, you can listen to the Daily Fro if you're looking for more audio fix each week, each day. At night, I put up a new Daily Fro. So go back and listen. There's 35 of them currently. You can go back and listen. They're anywhere between 8 minutes and 18 minutes. I think 18 minutes was the longest I talked on one of them. Uh, And they talk about all different types of things. Something was going on in my life in the day. Something else. (laughs) What? Oh, Beatrox TV just gave me $6.90 just for me. (laughs) $6.90. Thank you. Such a <laughs> random number. They know how they know what buttons to push out there still, apparently. <laughs> That's great. You're funny, Todd. I didn't say um, it. anything you'd like to add today, Todd. Nope, I think that's good. You can follow me where uh, all um, things are sold. Todd, Steven, anything? Uh, we'll have an A7 III review in the near future once we finish it and test out the images, obviously, in Lightroom when that supports it. Uh, and that's about it. We'll be Toady working on Toop. that hard. I see you. Toady Toop. Yeah, yeah. So that's it, guys. That's Raw Talk episode 241. We will schedule another one for next week, though I haven't even thought ahead to next week yet because today feels like our first day back at work because we've been away. Yeah, long week, man. Really long long week. week. But it was nice. Sony wined and dined us. I talked about that on one of the Daily Froze. And and I do want to comment real quick on Sony how (laughs) kind of like the toast that you weren't there for. I was in the bathroom. (laughs) You were in the bathroom. I had two bottles of Aquapana. Yep, yep. I had them leave. We were at a place <laughs> they called... They left the whole bottle for him. We were at a place called Picasso, where dinners are probably like 200 bucks a person. Super fancy. Uh, we were on the we were on the patio That's overlooking the Bellagio water fountains. It was beautiful. Right. And they're bringing out bottles of wine for everybody. They brought out Aquapana, and I oh. asked the guy if I could keep the bottle. You know, so I because I drink a lot. Jared got really drunk that night on Aquapana. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Then I had to pee yeah. seventy three times. Go ahead, say what you're gonna say. But I, I mean, the fact that they bring us all out, it's it's kind of like we're a collective family at this point. It's it's really nice to be able to chat with your fellow almost coworkers at this point on YouTube, and and it's it's nice to finally talk to someone that understands what we do. Yeah. You know, they get the YouTube thing. They get working behind the scenes as like an entrepreneur and all that thing. I talked to Max Yuryev a lot this week and he's a great dude he's uh, the where he's come from to today is is an incredible yeah. journey and what he's doing is great uh again what t- camera store tv is doing what everyone's doing is just really cool wow that wind is insane it's insane i don't know if people can hear that those are like 50, 50 mile per hour gusts but shout out to all the creators that came out for the sony event and, 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 and obviously also, sony we've also run into the same similar people at at uh, nikon 
Correct. Yes. Uh, similar, similar, but yeah, not the same people. Do we get to cut to Dan? Is that why you just moved the switch, Dan? I think so. You do your job, Jared. Oh, I was going to say, Dan, do you want to add anything? <laughs> no, he's shaking his head. <laughs> uh, there he is. Nothing? So I'm going to sign off now. I think it's time. Appreciate it, guys. If, uh, to, for the table of contents, it's down below after the show's over. <laughs> not yet. Not, not right yet. now. Not right now, because somebody asked that. What, what, later what, now. What time's the Ken Rockwell discussion? I don't know. 33 minutes and 82. Oh, speaking of guessing numbers right, I just want to say oh, this. Oh, yeah. We were getting weighed to go on the helicopter. They you weigh get you weighed with, with the your camera. clothes and with your bag. So I st- I, before I, st- I step on the scale and I go 189.6. I'm like, Steven, it's going to be 189.6. I think you said 186.9. Oh, 186.9. <laughs> so I say it to the girl and she goes, yep. I'm like, what? I thought you, she was joking. She was like, oh, I'm yeah, like, whatever. No, yeah. really. Is it 186.9? She's like, yeah, right on the dot. He, like, he called it. I called it. You'd be like great at guessing like how many jelly beans are in the jar. No, I'd be great <laughs> at at the carnival guessing how f- how f- fat or light or thin people are and how tall they are. I how won f- I won a ton of apples when I was a kid because I guessed all the apples in a giant crate. I literally won or too many apples. You mistaking the times that you had to bob for things in water. <laughs> <laughs> and there you have it, guys. That's where I'll talk episode two forty one. Jared Poland Fronos Photo <laughs> dot com. See ya. You thought you were funny. You made yourself laugh there. Click on the screen. Click Click something. Last week's Raw Talk, you can click over here to the left. For more Frono's photo videos, click to the right. Jared, please remember to put in these annotations later. (laughs) This is where nobody can hear us. This is where we just talk a lot. Yeah, Nobody can hear us now. Killer Simba. Yeah. (laughs) Killing Simba. And and three, two.